Okay, let's look at a particular subject today, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. Now, I'm going to say, and it has something to do, but it doesn't have something to do with it. They will say that God hates to sin, but loves the sinner. And I was thinking about, hey, this would be an interesting study to do, and just sitting here getting prepared, ready to do it, and I just came to my mind. But Proverbs 6.16, 6, for people who have the loving God, which he is, and yet forget that he's a holy and righteous God. And they forget, yeah, God will save a sinner from his sins, but God will cast a man into hell for rejecting Jesus. They're forgetting that God in his holiness cannot allow sin. He says, be ye holy for I am holy. And what do you do when somebody sins and will not seek what God has provided as a sin payment, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin in the world? What will God do for a Christian who is saved, a child of God, and sins? God's just going to excuse it, say, oh yeah, that's okay. We'll make it right. No. The judgment seat of Christ would hay or stubble if for things that are not confessed. That we have a verse in the Bible that says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And right after it says, sin not, but if we sin, and I'm not quoting the, the verse verbatim, we have an advocate. We got a holy and righteous God that does not want us to sin, but we sin. And we've got a God that hates. I know that's not a popular word today among the world and worldly Christians and churches, but it says, Proverbs 6, 16, these six things, six, the number of man, according to Revelation, does the Lord hate, Jehovah. Hate, got it? Hate. Hate speech. There are things that God hates, and we're going to look at six, but yea, seven are an abomination unto him. So there are seven things, and there are hateful things of a holy and righteous God that churches today, you know, they flowery and, li and lily and Easter bunnies and Santa Claus, God, but he's not like that. We have a God does not ever excuse sin. And if a lost man will never receive the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, if he has not the Son, he will not see life. He will see the wrath of God. <coughs> and a Christian that does not confess his sins and is washed in the blood, he will get the judgment seat of Christ, wood, hay, or stubble, which will burn, result in dust and ashes and smoke. He will lose a reward. He will lose an inheritance. And he will not get a well done. So let's look at this list. Verse 17, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in remembrance, running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. That's an interesting list. Can anybody really be perfect from this list? A proud look. That uppity look. You know, them people. Can't be with those people over there in church. They're not like me. You know, Lord God, the the father, I am glad I'm not like him, an ex extortionist, and, you know, he, he's wicked, and he does these things, he does that thing, and God, I'm just holy and right, and you're just so thankful that I'm here praying to you. God hates pride. It's a sin. And God never has of his attribute anything to deal with sin. You know what God's, if he were to have pride, he doesn't, like God can never have a, a, a lie. Well done. Now that's not a prideful statement. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. 
And there are many Christians who will say, I'm proud of you. I've got pride. And that is a sin and it needs to be repented of. But we've never been guilty of that. The proud look and the proudness of man. You know, we, we have that gesture, ooh, me. And it could be in our innocence and it could be in our guiltiness. And yet that's the first one listed, the, the proud look. Arrogancy, loftiness, how great I am. It's a sin. I know I know preachers right now, and I got one in mind. He's just so proud of his name and and who he is and what he is and what he's done for the Lord. That's sin. Pride comes before a fall. Men in the Bible who have had pride without repentance and getting right with God has fallen deeply. God hates that. A lying tongue. God hates a lying tongue. John 8, 44 says, The liar. The father of lies, the liar. The one who produces lies is Satan, the devil himself. I'll tell you what a lying tongue is. Santa Claus. Easter Bunny. Tooth fairy. In the beginning was this happy little princess or this happy little kingdom. Those are lies. But in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. What's a lying tongue? The Big Bang. God hates a lying tongue. And what can a lying tongue be? When you misapply the word of God or you misquote the word of God. I hate to say, I've been guilty of lying by misquoting the Bible when I'm on the public street preaching. I have not always gotten the Bible correct 100%. I lied. Lying is one of the things that God hates. And yet we call up the buzz, <laughs> we're sick, <laughs> can't come in. And then you go do whatever you wanted to do that day that you didn't want to work. We lie about ourselves and how good we are, how great we are, how wonderful we are, or our family. We lie, 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 lie. And we hide it by a little white lie. It's a fairy tale. It's not going to hurt. Cross my fingers and all that other nonsense. God hates lies. And the tongue that speaks lies. And that will fall for any lost man or any saved man. And this list that we're going to be can be for the lost and for the saved. And for the lost that has not been applied, the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world, pride and lying right now, will be cast off in the lake of fire that burns forever. A Christian that is prideful and a Christian that has lied and has not confessed his sins would hay or stubble a loss. Smoke detectors burning in glory. We lie. We tell lies. We lie to our families. We lie to our bosses. We lie, 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 lie. Cop pulls us over. We tell a lie to get out of a ticket. We lie to, did you do this and you're going to get in trouble? Oh, no, 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 I didn't do it. We've lied as children to our parents. So we want to get a scolding, want to get a licking, want to get whatever punishment the parents would bring upon the child. And hands that shed innocent blood. Now, I want to remark particularly on this one in Matthew 27, verse 4. It is Judas that went to the priest and says, I, I have shed. Uh, let's go there. Uh, let's not get it wrong. Let me not get it wrong. Matthew 27, verse 4. Innocent blood. Hands that shed innocent blood. Now Judas did not slay Jesus. But Judas said in 27.4 to Matthew saying, I have sinned and that I have betrayed the innocent blood. One of the things that Judas did was something that God hated. Living with God, Jesus Christ, and he went and done something that God hated. 
He shed innocent blood. Shed innocent blood. What, what could I think of? How about someone going out, getting drunk, getting in their car, driving wherever they're going to drive, and they kill a family in a motor vehicle accident, DUI? Was there not innocent parties in that? How about smoking and secondhand smoke that people breathe in that smoke and they died because of your disgusting habit? Sinful habit. What about hands of the government that have shed innocent blood? Such as one great one to remind me of Adolf Hitler through his mouth and his politics, many Jews were slain by his army. God hated that, and more so because they were Jewish people. I will curse them that curse you. If somebody will be or has been killed innocently, maybe babies in the womb, I, what could be more innocent than a baby inside of a womb being slain that God hates it? That's the thing God hates. And when I bring up the abortion, you, know, you got two sides, either yay or nay. But when I brought up the pride, oh, you know, well, pride is linked right there with abortion. A lie is linked right there with someone being killed by DUI. Look at, and there happened to be, uh, verse 16, 17, 18, 19 are the same context. But listen, the proud, the lying is right there with the shedding of an innocent life, which could be abortion, which could be DUI, which could be secondhand smoke. It could be whatever it can be that causes a life of an innocent party. And yet Judas is the example. I have innocent blood. I have betrayed it. And it is a part of Judas. He would be charged with also with the murder of Jesus because he set forth the ball to be rolled. And Jesus blasted him on the offense of woe be unto him that offenses come. Had been better he not been born. And innocent blood, I can name all kinds of situations. Now, I am not talking about the innocent blood where you're driving down the road and a child or somebody runs out in front of your car and you don't see it. That's not the innocent blood I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who had put into their minds and their thoughts. I'm Look, look at Proverbs chapter 1. Just keep your place there, Proverbs chapter 1. 111. If they say, come with us, let us wait for blood. Their purpose, they want to kill somebody. All right. The intent. You're going to go into a, a, a store, a convenience store, a package store, and you're packing some kind of weapon. There is motive, there is opportunity to kill somebody. And if you slay and kill the person behind the counter, the cashier, the, the, the stock person, the clerk, or the owner, whoever it is. So you can get the money, you can get the drugs, you can get the alcohol, whatever you want to get from that store. God hates that. If a person is to be killed innocently, God hates that. And there are many people out there in the root of abortion. Yay, go ahead, preach it. But when I talk about your pride, no, 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 be quiet. When I talk about the lies that you say, oh, no, no, let's not talk about that. They're lumped in the same verse. They're lumped in the same group of seven things that God hates. Now, God does not elevate pride more than lying. He doesn't elevate the, the murder more than lying or the, the, the uh, proudness. He lumps them all together. Listen, there is no degrees of sin. There's no major catastrophical sin, and there's no eedy, weeny, tiny, itsy, bitsy little sin. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God.
and the heart, the heart, the heart, never the head. You can't have a shrink take care of you. Because the Bible doesn't say it's the mind. It's the heart. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jesus said, it is the heart that man looks upon a woman to, co to, to commit adultery with her. The heart. Not the mind. Not the, not the, uh, the physical part of a male and the, and the physical part of a female. The, the heart. With the heart that devises wicked imaginations. And it doesn't even say the imaginations have to be. Let's say I'm sitting back one day and I'm just saying, you know, let's say I'm at the office and across the street is a bank. I look at that bank and I say, you know what? That guard over there, he takes his lunch every day at one o'clock. Man, you know, at, at, at a quarter after one, you know, there's not that much business in there. And you start devising, oh, if I could just hit that bank and, and rob that bank and get the money of that bank. Yeah. And you live your life out 20, 30, 50, 70, 90, 100 years, and you never robbed that bank, but you thought about it. God hates you thinking about it. That devises wicked imagination. What's a wicked imagination? You want to steal from somebody. You're coveting the stuff that's in that bank when the Bible says, Thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not steal. How about when Jesus said, with the thoughts of your heart, you look upon a woman to lust after her in your heart. You devise a, a, a wicked imaginations. You, you have sex with that woman in your heart, but not physically in a bed, motel, hotel, or bedroom. And yet you have devised yourself wicked imaginations. And God hates that just as much as abortion, just as much as DUI, just as much telling a little lie, just as much as pride. God hates it. You're in your bedroom. Mama, daddy has just spanked your rear end or has taken away your privileges or something. And you're in your bed. Oh, I wish I had the parents. I wish my parents would die. I wish God would get rid of those parents. I wish those parents would mind. Oh, I can't stand my mom. I can't stand my Oh, I hate. That's wicked imaginations. That's a sin you need to repent. Honor thy father and mother. I wish I had other parents. I wish I had that kid's parents over there. They're so much better. That's not honoring your parents. That's a sin. That's a heart that vises wicked imaginations. Can you think about all the torture that has been thought about up, upon people? Uh, the Bible thinks thinking about imaginations upon their bed and woe to them that practice it. What about the thought and the wicked imaginations that people have thought of that they have not put to practice? They had not come out and done what they thought. Oh, what this world would be in wickedness. A wicked imaginations to think about. Somebody had to think one day, let's allow sodomites perverts, sexual perverts, according to the Bible, the abomination, let's come out of closet and let's tamper with the world and let's assault the world. Somebody had to think about that and somebody put that in practice. God says, I hate that. And again, you're, hey, all right, he's preaching about sodomy. He's preaching about, uh, you know, abortion. I'm also preaching about pride. I'm also preaching about lying. I'm talking about murder. And I'm talking about your evil, wicked thoughts, Christian. How about Christian? Well, you know, I give money to my church. They're only going to misapply. And, you know, uh, you know, my pastor, he, he's living on the hog. He's so great. And, that, and the missionary, ah, I don't really like the missionary. I'm going to keep my money for my, myself. That's a wicked imagination. That's an evil heart. That's, you know what? You don't want to give to the Lord what the Lord's giving you. That's an evil imagination. Another wicked evil imagination. I will render unto you what you've done to me. Vengeance for vengeance. That's an evil imagination. And again, you do not have to practice it. People don't realize, and it needs to be preached from the pulpits of the world. We are going to be judged, saved or lost by what we think. It does not have to be into action. 
In Matthew chapter 12, Jesus said, we shall give an account of every idle word. Matthew 5, he says, you look upon a woman to lust after his heart. You've already committed adultery with her. And that does not just go with adultery. That goes with the thought of murder. That goes with the thought of stealing. That goes with any thought that goes against the holiness of God. You're guilty and God hates it. You know, you, you think about, you know, overthrowing the government. That's a sin. I'm going, oh, what if I blew up this place? That's a sin. What if all those people drop dead? That's a sin. I hope my boss died. I hope my boss has a violent, evil something. That's a sin. Whoever it is. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. Mischief, something trouble, something that, that little things are trouble. You know, again, let, let's take let's take for the fact is let's say you, you're you're in a you're in a store somewhere, and a worker is working on the vending machine, and for whatever something happens, the vending machine spills out all the coins that are in the vending machine all over the floor. Are you going to be so quick to run up to take and steal? Are you going to be so quick to run through that red light? That's a sin. Are you going to be so quick to shortchange your employer hours that you didn't work? What, what, what can you think of mischief? What can you think of a little thing that you're going to hurry up and go do? And, and there's tons of things. I'm going to go hurry up and I'm going to go do something that's wrong. That God would not approve. I'm going to be in a hurry. I'm going to make haste. And that's one of the things God hates. Come on, children, let's hurry up. We gotta go to the ball game. Hurry up, children. We gotta go to the movie. Hurry up, children. We gotta go see this show. Hurry up, children. We got this place to go. And then you stagger and you slumber and you waste time and you, you take forever to get to church. How's that sound? A false witness that speaketh lies. There's that lying again. Twice lies. Have you ever spoken of something that you did not know about? I think it's called gossip. Have you ever repeated words that you are not 100% sure without making a statement 100% sure? Now, I had a sequence of three days ago. I had to report news of particular people. And I said, listen, this is secondhand. What I'm going to tell you is what I think of, uh, what I have been told right now, what I think. I don't have all the details. When I do get all the details, I will inform you, and it may be different from the story I'm telling you today. Now, that's not false witnessing. I've already given a declaration. I'm speaking out of hand right now, but this is what's going on right now. There's further news to come. Well, have you been so quick? Did you hear about Mrs. Such and Such? Oh, you won't believe what I heard about Mrs. Such and Such. And then you go say, what well, Mrs. Such and Such. Well, what happened to Mrs. Such and Such never happened. And you went and told other people what you heard and you lied. I'll tell you exactly what happened. When I was in a church in uh, Pawkintown, Connecticut, things were going on that, that I was having an affair and my wife was having an affair. And people were reporting that and repeating that. And it was completely out of whack because there were many witnesses to the time and events that that was not having, happening. They were lying and they were reporting falsely what's going on. And when Jesus stood his trial before the Sanhedrin, the Bible states for the fact is they had many people that would come and testify against Jesus. They were false witnesses and they couldn't even book. Get their stories amongst the false witnesses. And when we think about the number one thing of false witness, have you ever stood in a courtroom? I swear, and they don't even do that. I swear to tell the whole truth, but about the truth, so help me God, they don't even do that anymore. But have you gone before a judge? Have you gone before an official, a police officer? Have you stated something that you 
are supposed to declare you are an eyewitness and you lied about it? That's, per that's perjury. That's the same thing as false witness. And it speaks to a lying tongue and a false witness that speaketh lies. Lies are hated by God. And the Bible tells us God's incapable. God's not able. And God will never lie to us. It is of the devil, John 8, 44. We go contrary to God's attribute when we lie and God hates it no matter what the lie is. Biggest lie coming up now is Santa Claus. You have children looking forward to Satan Claus more than they are for Jesus. That's a lie. And he that soweth discord among the brethren. Disagreements, arguments, debates. You call Christians from one point of view to another point of view. You got the right hand side of the church angry with the left hand side of the church. You've got the females against the males. You got the, the choir against the nursery. You got the people who like the pastor and people who like the associate pastor. You got the people who have been in church 200 years. You got the people who have been in church for two months. Paul, you know, Paul said to the Corinthian church, I'm of Apollos and I, I'm of Paul, I'm of this, I'm of that. That's sowing discord. That is going against the unification of the faith of Jesus Christ amongst the brothers and sisters in the Lord, and God hates that. And when you speak evil of your brethren in your church or any of the body of Christ, whether it be here, or whether it be there, or it be over there. Whether the body be in the United States or be in China or Africa, wherever it is, if you're trying to sow the discord amongst the body of believers that are saved through the blood of Jesus Christ, you're trying to cause a division. You're trying to get your own following. You're trying to cause a church split. You're trying to get something that goes against the principles and the doctrines of the church of Jesus Christ. God says, I hate that. And it's an abomination. And that can be done by murmuring, that could be done by lies. So let's look at something here. We got pride, we got lying, we got murder, we got imaginations, we've got running to trouble, we've got lying and false witness, and we got causing troubles. And God hates those. And yet we have a particular scripture in the Bible that says, if we confess our sins, confess this. He is faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He'll forgive and he'll forget. And these things are going on. Never mind the unsaved. I mean, all this is going on outside in the world. Outside the body of Jesus Christ, okay? It's it's the world. But what about this stuff going on inside the church? Pride. We're proud of our preacher. We've got I've seen church I've seen church with banner. We're pride of our church. Look how many people came to Sunday school. Look how many people did this in our church. Look how many you know, feet washing we had in our church. Look how great our car wash was. Look how great our BBS was. How great our pastor is. All glory and honor to our pastor. That happens in the church. I've been in one church. Like that. A lying tongue. I'll tell you a lying tongue. Let me... Keep your place here, but go to John 14. I'll show you a lying tongue that happened in the church that we left. Chapter 14. Chapter 14. I'll show you a lying tongue. And this came out of the pulpit. Ready? Chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If there are not rooms, you lied to me because the Bible says mansion. 
There are people in the pulpit, especially lying women, when the Bible says women are not to be pastors. And they're saying, thus saith the Lord, and God's sitting up in heaven. No, I didn't. They're called deceivers. They're called wolves. And God hates it. Saved or lost. And hands that shed innocent blood. You can get a saved man, go out there and commit D DUI. You can have a saved woman, go out and commit abortion. You can have a, a, a person commit murder in their head and not do it. Matthew 5, 28. There are people who are mad and, and, and spitting iron nails at the pastor because he didn't choose them for whatever position in the church. They are angry and furious, but they're going to stay in that church because that church is their family church. But they are fuming, they're angry that that family over there, how dare they, came into my church and sat in my pew. Oh! I'm serious. I know people like that. I've heard them. Esau was angry at his brother Jacob. They said, I'm going to kill him when dad is dead. Now, Esau never killed him, but he's charged with the murder. That the Holy Spirit spoke to Rebecca and said, you better get Jacob out of here. Judas is charged with the murder and will be charged with the murder of Jesus. And he did not take one nail and put it in the body of Jesus Christ at all upon that cross. Yet he set the ball rolling. And then there's the heart that divides evil, excuse me, wicked and evil imagination. You are thinking, hey, I, 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 in the church, got to get rid of that pastor because, man, he's preaching about my sin and, and he can't preach about my sin because I feel uncomfortable and I'm not, you know, this is, this is my church. That woman has no business playing the piano up there because my wife can do, my daughter, we can do it better. Listen, I've heard arguments, I've heard, I have not witnessed this one, but I have heard arguments that there have been imaginations of wickedness in the church because the color of the carpet. Really? I've been in a few church building programs and the church has been finished built and they've been angry because whatever something it happens in church never mind the world and there are people mad at the pastor a rightful holy pastor that preaches the word of god they're mad at the pastor because they think the pastor's been peeking on them through the windows and trying to figure out when the Holy Spirit's using that man of God saying, hey, person in the pew, you're guilty. You're a sinner. I'm speaking to you. And they get mad at the preacher. It's all through the Bible. There were kings of Israel and the kings of Judah that slain the men of God because they were mad at God and the men of God. And they got rid of the men of God. Yes, it happens in church. Feet that are swift to run to mischief. I'm going to say it. I don't care what people say. I think a lot of this, this VBS, I think a lot of the, this nonsense and programs of church are, are, are evil. I think they're wicked. I think they're the devil. And their people run more to that stuff than they do for a true biblical message. The first church I was in, is a is a worldly church. We would not have Sunday evening service because we had Sunday morning service and we had fellowship after church Sunday morning. You know, it's funny because we would go to Sunday school. There would be very few people there. We would go to we go well. We would be there for Sunday morning service and many more people there. But it's amazing how more people were at the fellowship than were at the Sunday service. There are more to run to get the hamburgers and hot dogs than get the bread and water of life. I've witnessed that. I've seen it.
And there are people who will do other people harm in the church because of ego, because of pride, of a lying tongue to do it, and of an evil, wicked imagination. Even thinking about to the point of killing somebody. It's wicked and vile. And then there are false witnesses that speak his lie. There will be people that go to the pastor of the church and say X about somebody. And it's a lie, total lie. And thank be to God if you've got a pastor who will check out both sides of the story. He will not take the word of one. He'll take the mouth out of two or three witnesses and he'll diligently search and find out the truth and the facts of something being spoken about someone else. There are Christians who lie about other Christians in church. I've had it happen to me. And I'm not talking about a worldly courtroom. I'm not talking about politics. I'm talking about in a church. I've heard things from people's lips that came into my ears about somebody, and I don't care if it's true or not. I didn't want to hear it. I didn't need to hear it. Even if it was true, I didn't need to hear it. Listen, just tell me, hey, you know, the family's having trouble. Ex-family, will you pray for them? Okay, I don't need to know anything else. If I need to know, they will tell me themselves. I've had even pastors of churches come, you know, tell me, I don't need to shut up. Just tell me to pray for the family and particular members of the family. I'll pray for them. And the Holy Spirit wants me to know the Holy Spirit will reveal to me if I need to particularly. Listen, I'm praying for people on my prayer list right now. I don't even know if they're alive. I say, Lord God, I don't know about this person. I'm not praying for the dead, but if they're still alive, I'm praying for them. If they're then. Let this prayer be a wash. I don't need to know the details. Yet details will be spoken, and some of the details in churches are false witnesses, lie. And then there's a sowing the discord among the brethren. Just you know, you got the north versus the south, and the east versus the west, and the left side versus the right side, and the red carpet crew versus the blue carpet crew, and it's nonsense. You know. I can't believe our church, we had pizza for fellowship. And, you know, I like the hamburgers. Okay. Other nonsense. When you're disabling the unity that Christians have or should have, God hates it. Now, we're not all going to believe the right doctrines. I have particular things that my pastor believes and. And he has particular things that he believes. And listen, we, we don't need to divide ourselves amongst that. I don't need to have a confrontation between him and me. And No, it's, we believe in one stead thing. The King James Bible is the word of God. Jesus Christ is the only way, the only truth, the only life. And we're to go out there and tell people about it. We're to witness to him. We're to have the proper means of salvation. And we're to grow Christians in the word. Hate and abomination, pride, lying, murder, wicked imaginations, mischief, lying and false witness and discord among the brethren. There they are. So next time somebody said, God don't hate. Say, yeah, I heard a man. Let me give you his video. Let me give you his, his uh, uh, audio file. Listen, sit down, listen to it. It's going to be about 40 minutes. I swear you can take 40 minutes. You can just get over your anger and trying to kill him and trying to decipher him with your, with your forked tongue. Just listen to him preach what God hates. And then confess your sins. And he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How's that? I don't do this me. I'm doing this to help you and to help you grow. I want you to realize there are things that God hates. There it is. And one of the things we're told, uh, one of the things of wisdom is to them to hate 
wickedness, hate sin, hate evil. We're the haters. We're the, the, the flee from it. 